Uh, this is actually quite a special uh, moment for me to welcome you all to Oxford on behalf of the university and the city and the Oxford Kidney Unit in which, in which I work. We're very honoured to have been chosen. Um, you will discover that I'm not an expert on the subject, but I have been working in kidney units for about 40 years, and you can't help learning about all ports if you, if you do that. You realise that this is a condition which affects members of your community, and you watch it going through generations. Uh, so I'm here to learn, and I, I'm, I'm going to reflect in my discussions with you the views of generalists. Uh, Oxford's a funny place. I, I have been here a long time. You know it was once called the home of lost causes and forsaken beliefs. And certainly 50 years ago, and soon after I started in nephrology, I think, uh, I think nephrology was a bit of a lost cause. Uh, we, we had nothing really. We just described diseases phenotypically. We gave them names like Ellis type 1, Ellis type 2, didn't really know what they were. And we had a bit of morphology. We were just really phenotypists, phenotypists. And, uh, and we only had two useful treatments, which were a, a testament to our failure to treat disease. We had dialysis and transplantation, and neither of them were particularly great. So I've been qualified 40 years, and, and I must say I rejoice uh, at the amazing evolution in medicine in that 40 years. We've gone from just clinical phenotypes to genotypes, now to mechanisms of diseases. But there's one more step, as you all know, and that's to, to, to take all this understanding into rational treatments. Now, we've achieved this in nephrology, I think, in a number of diseases, but I'm afraid to say I think that polycystic kidney disease and all ports, big genetic diseases, are going to be very hard nuts to crack. Now, there's some particular reasons that it's great for Oxford uh, to be hosting this workshop. Now, every training nephrologist learns about Allports. We learn about Arthur Cecil Allport, who was a young South African who actually trained in Edinburgh, uh, where my colleague and friend, Neil Turner, who's introduced himself, and an Oxford graduate, and an SHO on the kidney unit, uh, now works as the professor of nephrology. So uh, there's a little connection. But you only really understand the significance of this condition when you meet your first patients. And I met Susie Gear when I was a very junior trainee, and Susie uh, was, uh, sorry, Sally was Susie's um, mother. And I met her, her, her uncle, David, who was a man just a year younger than me, and they both were on, had dialysis and transplantation. And there was a particular poignancy for this family, which they've not shared with you, which is that they come from a very famous Oxford medical dynasty. Their grandfather was a man called Safarka Buzzard. Buzzard. He'd been the Regis Professor of Medicine here uh, and a very famous physician indeed. But he had a son uh, who was um, uh, S -S Sally's mother, who was a general physician in the Radcliffe Infirmary, who was known throughout the city as a wonderful and kind uh, physician. He had an excess of talents, though. Uh, the women said that he was incredibly handsome. He was a great athlete, played tennis at, at Wimbledon. He served as a surgeon commander in the Royal Navy in the Second World War, and, and he was much loved here. But in fact, he could not bring himself, apparently, to acknowledge the nature of the illness in his children. But the rec next generation who are here today, as you've seen, uh, have no such qualms. And through their granddaughter, Susie, they're raising awareness and promoting a search for a solution. Uh, this openness has really paid dividends. Now, uh, Susie's mother, Sally, was married to an accomplished surgeon sitting on my right, who's inter introduced himself, Mike Gear. Uh, Mike, it turns out, is also originally South African, and he and I were at the same school. But you won't be surprised to know that he had left by the time I started. <coughs> uh, this, uh, this surgeon operated, Mike, operated on a man in Gloucester and saved his life. And he must have known this man about the way that Allports had, had impinged on the life of his surgeon and his family. And about uh, six months ago, I opened the post to receive a letter from a um, firm of solicitors to say that uh, we were to be the beneficiaries of a large uh, inheritance. And I, I, I didn't know why, why we were to get a beneficiary. So I got the original will and it said it was um, to honor uh, uh, Professor Michael Gear, uh, knowing uh, that he had saved his life and he wanted something done for patients with kidney disease. Uh, I must say, I think Mike was, was uh, quite astonished when I tracked him down and told him this is the reason. Uh, and Oxford Nephrology has a, another reason for being grateful to the Allport cause. One of our medical students uh, had Allports. Um, he weathered the challenges of being on dialysis and having a transplant, and he even worked on the transplant unit. 
uh, and perhaps through his uh, insights into this and nephrology, he's completely dedicated his career to improving nephrology by fostering a commitment to uh, clinical trials. And there's Colin Bajant, who's introduced himself. He's, he's here today. He's, I can tell you he's inspiring um, a large number of the young trainees coming through the, through the Oxford Kidney Unit. He doesn't just inspire the young ones, he challenges the older ones with their prejudices about how medicine uh, should progress. Now, uh, Susie's given you the set of objectives, but I hope you're not going to consider me impertinent when I share with you something which I found quite inspiring when I was at the American Society of Nephrology uh, uh, early, uh, late last year, where uh, the sort of Susie-type figure from the uh, Cystic Fibrosis Trust told us how they were tackling cystic fibrosis uh, as a research and therapeutic challenge. And I, I wrote it down because I thought it has a lesson for a lot of people. And she said the first thing they did was they recruited uh, and funded the best scientists. Uh, and then the, she said they, they funded them but told them to collaborate and not to compete. And uh, then told them that they, what they needed to do was to identify mechanisms and potential compounds that might be molecular modifiers to test their solutions in simple models. And I was interested to hear about a dog model and then to gather and to, f and to genotype all the patients so they would be ready to go when they had, um, had a compound they wished to, to test. Uh, and she said there's a good piece of advice if you want to fundraise, she said go for a potentially soluble problem first because if you have a success, it'll, breathe, it'll uh, breed another success and you will, you will then go uh, much faster. And then she said, don't try and do it all yourself. Once you've got a, a compound, she said, go to pharma with a strong case. And they've had their first success in certainly a subtype of cystic fibrosis. So we, your Oxford hosts, do welcome you here to your captive weekend. But now you need to build your bridges from the, the science to the, to the solution. So let's get cracking. So I think our first speaker... And I, I've been asked to be the chairman because I think I'm supposed to be the, the Colombo who doesn't really understand and asks the questions because some people are too shy to ask questions. So our first speaker is Francis Flinter, who's the professor of genetics at Guy's Hospital. Um, every nephrologist in Oxford knows Francis because we've all written her little letters. She's our pen friend on all ports. And we get these most wonderful letters back in which she's counseled our patients uh, and done the science and, and helped us to manage them. So we're delighted that you're going to be launching today's program. Thank you. Which one is it? This one here. 